Hello, we're going to create a 555 timer circuit. Let's go ahead, file new project in ORCAD 17.4. So 555 timer. And I'll give this a special folder. Select folder, enable piece by simulation. So I like to simulate my design first where possible. And I'll be using a reference design from one of my online courses, but you could set it to whatever you want. Now let's get parts from hmm, uh, maybe the PCB library. But I don't have any libraries, so let's add library. And I'll go with everything in piece spice here. Mm, I can do it that way. Or I can go to place, piece spice component, resistor, so on. I'll zoom in with the right mouse button and drag. And then rotate this with R. So we have a 240 ohm resistor, 240. I mean, those say 1 kilo ohm, but... I'm going to change them to 240. So 240, double click, 240, resistor 3, you know, 36K or whatever, and then 220K. Do these resistors have footprints? Yes, they do. Okay, cool. Through hole footprint resistors. So not only can they be simulated, but they have footprints. That's good. Next, I want some diodes. So I will go... Um, do I need to simulate the diodes? Mm. Ah, good question. Sure, let's go ahead and do it. Rotate with R, place my diode there. So I'm going to uh, lay out the PCB once I'm done. Or actually, you know what? These could be LEDs that could light up, actually. But I'm not going to get crazy with it. Let's just pretend they're LEDs. Okay. For the ground, let's place a ground. So place ground. And the thing is, I'm going to switch out these parts for, like... Uh, Manufacturer parts anyway, some of these parts, so don't worry about it. 9 volts DC, so let's go to place, piece by component, source, control, no, no. voltage sources DC, place it. End mode. Now I need a 555 timer, so go to place, not search providers. Right, so I don't want this. I'll close my search providers option. Let's go to place and uh, piece by component. I want a 555 timer. So to put in 555, let's see what we get. This looks like a good one. Right click end mode. Now to wire this thing up, I think I have everything I need. The spacing on this grid looks really small. Let's go to Options, Preferences, Grid Display. Ah, I'll set it to 1 to 1 grid. You can go with lines if you want, and it'll look like this. And now, when I move my parts around... Oh, they're on a 1 to 1 grid. And look at that. I also have a footprint for this already, so I actually don't even need the part search provider feature like that. Cool. Very cool. Let's connect the circuit. So I need for my discharge thing, hit W on your keyboard to start wiring. Discharge. This would go to this diode over here.
the zero. Now make sure this zero comes from the pSpice library. If you want, you can go to place pSpice component ground pSpice ground. This is different from a regular ground. It has the zero on here. The regular grounds do not. If you go to ground and then look for something like uh, GND capsim, that's not going to simulate. You need zero capsim. All right. So we have, oh, we need capacitors. Place B spice component capacitor. Rotate with R. Place two of these. Double click on here. Well, actually, let's click on this. Yeah, we've got a footprint for it. Good. 10U. The little U stands for micro. Even if you use big U, it'll start, it'll stand for micro. And this one is 10N, which is nanofarad. Hit W on the keyboard to continue wiring. And these will be connected to ground. Now, why didn't I put it like this so that they all cross over on one dot? It's because that's just not a thing that you want to do for visual purposes. We want to make sure that we communicate intentionality. We want to show that it's intentional that we have a four-way junction. Because we don't want to see that it's done by mistake or something. Like we don't want someone guessing, hmm, did they move it by mistake? Did they move it and then it overlaps by mistake? No. Okay. So now we go over here. Pin number one, which would be ground here, we'll connect it to this. And really this ground, this is, this should be called, uh, return zero or something, zero volt return. We want to start taking ground out of the vocabulary for return paths. It may never happen, but hey, at least you know. For the output signal, we want to see our output on resistor two at the 240 volts, I mean the 240 <laughs> volts, what? No, 240 ohm uh, section here. Then for the output, we want to loop that back into the trigger across this 36 ohm, 36 kilo ohm resistor. So this goes in the trigger here. Next, we have control. The control signal is going to come off this 10 nanofarad capacitor. I mean, it's not a signal being sent necessarily, but anyway, the reset will be going to It'll be held high to the, oh, this should be 9 volts. So why 9 volts? Because it's like a, I don't know, I just choose it as a battery or something like that. Set it to whatever makes sense. Okay, so this will be holding the reset high. And I think it's, if you put it low, then it resets the chip. So you want to keep it high. And for the trigger signal, now trigger came out and it looped back to 36 kilo ohm. Okay, we want to make a divider here. Now, I just made a connection, an extra connection by mistake. This dot indicates three wires connected together. One, two, three. But when there are only two wires, one and two connected together, it does not make a dot. So we have an extra wire somewhere around here. Let's move this around. Ah, weird. Okay. Move this back. Drag the wire. Boom. Now the dot is gone. Great. Let's continue building the schematic, right? So W on the keyboard. We continue the wiring. Yeah. What else do we need? This, this grid, if it's bothering you, you can always change it. Go to options, preferences, grid display, turn to dots. Or you could just make it not displayed. It's up to you. For this diode, which really should be an LED, but I got really lazy. So, yeah. We'll just connect that. Now, if you make weird connections, you can always drag things around. So, let me show you. You can drag that resistor, 
drag the diode, which should be an LED, but anyhow. And then, what else do we need? VCC, ah, of course, the chip needs power. Connect it to the main voltage source. Ah, do you notice something? We might be missing some connections for the threshold. So make the connection for threshold on this capacitor. And threshold should also be connected to the bottom of this 220 kilo ohm resistor. The connection is not the prettiest, honestly. But anyway, so now the circuit looks fine, right? Let's just double check to make sure. Do a design rule check. So go to PCB design rules check. Do we want an online DRC? Yes. Online DRC just means it'll show us errors in real time down here. So let's run on this entire design. Uh, the report will be in here in the 555 timer folder. Hit run. Do you see the error in the circuit? Well, if you don't see it, it will show up. Well, hopefully it does. Parts, we check for invalid references. Warning, net has two or more aliases that might lead to a short check power ground mismatch. So it highlights this thing. See that? This is listed as a ground pin and it's really listed as a power net called GND or ground for this device. And this is a net called zero, which also is, uh, has a carries of voltage. So it's saying, Hey, just, just double check that this net here has two or more aliases. It's called zero. And here the pin is called pin number one or ground. You have to be careful with that, but it's okay. That's where we want it to be. What bothers me though is there's a missing connection. Could not retrieve PCB footprint property for a device. Probably this one. It's only a piece spice part. This right here. I'm amazed that it didn't find that, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah, don't know what that's about. If your wires get really bendy like that, you can drag it. It's really nice. Okay, let's go ahead and save this design. And then here is our design. Here's the schematic page. You can rename the page if you want, but we won't do that. Let's simulate this. Oh, and if you don't have your DRC window or session log or whatever, then um, you can go to view, then choose session log, and you can turn that on or off. You can choose view and then, yeah. Go command window, other windows, DRCs, online DRCs. Okay, now for simulation. Go to PSPICE new simulation profile. Call it transient, meaning it's time. it varies with time. And I'm going to close this thing. Okay, so... We want this a stable vibrator to, or whatever this thing is, to show us some results in two seconds. Maximum step size, I'll leave it blank for now. Hit apply, then OK. And I want to monitor the output signal. So I'm going to put a probe on there. How do we do that? You can do a P spice markers voltage level. Right, right mouse button to uh, to zoom in with the drag there, 
and out. We place the probe there, it shows up, right click end mode. Now actually I want some net names on this, so let's place some net aliases or net names. You can hit N on your keyboard as well. Let's put a, the text out on there. This can be called threshold, so how do we change it? Mid operation, hit control E, and then you can call it, you can rename it. Control E again, let me see. Control, at least I think it's control. It's been a while. I can hit R on my keyboard to rotate the text, then click to place it. What else do we need? Discharge, control E, discharge. Threshold is named, control is named, trigger, control, control E, trig. Let's call it trig for short, rotate it with R and place it. Reset. Mm, you know, I will call this uh, VCC at the top. That means this reset pin will have the name VCC, or this net will have the name VCC, even though reset is connected to it. Um, VCC is VCC. That looks fine. We'll right click end mode. Control S to save. Now, let's simulate it. Go to P Spice, run. I like that these parts have footprints and piece by simulation profiles. Uh oh, looks like we got a problem here. Why isn't it simulating or why isn't it uh, switching voltage? Okay, so what I ended up doing was trying a different part and that didn't work out either for the simulation. I mean, it runs the simulation, right? But I'm not getting the waveform I was hoping for. Nonetheless, let's keep it moving. And I want to show you something where you can add a footprint to a part. So let's right click. Before I right click, let me show you. If I right click and then do show footprint, could not launch footprint. Okay because there's no footprint associated with it, or it can't find it. Let's right-click, choose Edit Properties, and then PCB Footprint. Now, I took the footprint name from the original 555 timer chip, and I put this here. Save. Yes. Now, when I click on it, the footprint appears. What's cool is that I can see the footprints for all of these parts. Uh, this doesn't have a footprint either, but that's okay. What I will do is get some LEDs from part search providers. And the reason I'm doing all this stuff and changing things is so that you can see a decent range of the available or of the tools you have available to you. Since the circuit uh, will assume that it works or whatever, then I'm going to start replacing parts with manufacturer parts, mostly that the LEDs, yes, I switched those diodes to LEDs, and this thing, I will switch it to maybe a battery cell or something. These other parts have footprints, and I could switch these out too, actually. So let's go ahead and do that. Search providers. Now, how do you get to there? Go on your schematic page, then choose place search providers, and then you will have to enter some credentials, then your search providers will show up. Now, when I enter TLC555 from like Texas Instruments, I can choose this, place the part. And I'm going to use this to replace the 555 timer with. Even though I don't really have to because it already has a footprint. Place that there, right click and mode. And in this situation, uh huh. Let's, you know, you can delete this and use this instead. Let's show the footprint. It looks nice. Yeah. So let's see. 
let's delete this one or delete this part. Huh, looks like it doesn't want to delete. So I'll right click and choose delete. Great. Ah, this one's a little tricky. So let's see. VDD. Connect VDD to the top there. Let's move some of these parts out the way. Give ourselves some room here. I'm sure it's a simple mistake I made, maybe with like the values for the resistors or whatever, but hey, I'm just showing you the general uh, lay of the land here. So output, there we go. Ground, let's place that like that for trigger. See, I'm glad I named these nets because they're easy to find. Output goes to output. Reset. Uh, where's reset? There we go. This is going to connect. Stay high. For the control signal or the control whatever, let's delete that and make a new connection. I'll drag this wire down so it's not overlapping with the edge of the part. For threshold, let's, uh, okay, see, I will let it overlap for now, temporarily, so I can move this CONT signal down, or wire down, and then drag that down, you see that? Then for discharge, similar situation, but what I'll do is move this part up a bit just so I can have the wires be separated. Okay, great. Now, this looks very wonky. You don't want a bunch of wires crossing over each other. But it is what it is. Now, just like what you did with search providers for this part, you can replace these. These don't have any footprints, right? So I'm going to replace this with an LED that does have a footprint. And they might be surface mount LEDs. So let's look for LED surface mount, you know, or 0603 package. You don't even need to put surface mount because a 0603 describes, it only applies to surface mount packages anyway. So let's look at the details for this first part. It has a schematic symbol, it has a PCB footprint, but you know what? I want, I want a part that has a 3D model. Let me see. You know, how about this one from Symaxis? And it's a 0603 package. That looks good. Right click, place part. Great. Now rotate with R and place it right in there. Gonna drop that in there, over there. Then delete these other ones. And then just drag this in. Drag that in. Now when I right click this and choose show footprint, it shows it to me. Man, this looks really large for surface mount LED, that courtyard. And what is the courtyard? The courtyard is if you right click and choose show footprint, that'll be this perimeter. It's massive. What? Okay. Crazy. All right, let's hit save. And what I'll do is show you the annotation feature. What does annotate? It means to name or rename. So you can go to tools, annotate, update the entire design if you want, or you can reset references. Let's reset our references to question marks. And there are a lot of settings you can change here, but we'll go with that and click okay. Yeah. 
Notice how everything is reset with the question marks. Now I'm going to go to Tools Annotate again, Incremental Reference Update, click OK, then Yes, then click OK. Fantastic, hit Save. Now it looks like all my parts have footprints. Let's go to PCB New Layout, Allegro 555 Timer, good, click OK. Now, let's choose PCB Editor, and we have a blank canvas. If you want, you can look at the design workflow to set things up. So go to Setup, your design parameters, set what you want. You can look at plated holds, back drill holds, non-plated holds, things like that. And Design. Now, you may notice that I did not change this part. So right here I have the diode connected to some part that doesn't have footprints. I'm going to, I actually forgot to put connectors on here, but we will change that later. And that's going to be called an engineering change order. I can set my units for the board to mills or whatever I want. But what's most important? You know, everything looks pretty good. If you want, you can set up your grids to 100 mil grids for your, when you place your parts. And let's turn the grid on, click apply, then OK. Apply, OK. Uh oh, wait a second. Set up. So how did I get design, design parameters? I went to click on this, but I can also do set up design parameters. But actually they have grids right here. So I'll turn this back on, click apply, then OK. Ugh, this looks crazy. All right. Let's change the origin. Go to setup, then change origin and I click somewhere here so the origin is there easy to find now for our colors I don't like the default colors but it's fine maybe we'll make the top layer red for the pins the V is the etch anti etch bound and cavity why is my DRC black mm, I don't like that no for the DRC errors, let's make that like a bright yellow. Strange. And then for the bottom copper of the PCB, this is the bottom layer of copper. We'll set these. You can also change all of them to blue, but that changes the DRC to blue, column to blue. So you need to click here and then change that back to yellow. For the solder mask top, I may want Mm, green for my pins and vias. Solder mask bottom, green as well. Base mask top, maybe gray. It's totally up to you. Base mask bottom. Click apply. For board geometry, silk screen top, I want my silk screen text to be white and white. For components, I'm going to want their component values. Well, okay, let me show you why I would turn these off by default. But let's go to silk screen top for components. I will change all of those to white, silk screen bottom to white as well. The reference designators for my parts though, I want to keep those very visible. So I'll change those to red. Click apply, then okay. What are even all these settings, Kirsch? Well, I'll show you. Data breast preparation. So let's set our board outline. We can create a board automatically. So let's say you want your board to be a certain width and height. You choose place rectangle. So we want it to be four inches wide. So 4,000 mils wide and 4,000 mils high. For the design edge clearance, we'll choose 40 thousandths of an inch all around. Now go here, click once to place your board, and then click OK. Now the board is placed. What does this look like? Let's go to save, click yes, and let's look at the 3D view, which is this icon here. But you can also go to display 3D canvas, click OK. And this is what our board looks like. Hold down the shift key and you can add well the hold down the shift key and the middle mouse button and you can move this around. 
looks fine. Now I'll place some parts. I don't like this grid being on. I really don't. So I'm going to turn this off. You can right click, quick utilities, grids, and turn it, just turn it off. Click apply or OK. Great. Yes. Now let's place some parts. Place components manually. Check mark all of them. Hide. And then we'll place our capacitor. The diodes, which are the LEDs, resistor, right, and the chip. Okay, so in general, we want our connectors to be on the edges of the PCB. We also want the chip to be sometimes in the center, a lot of times in the center because it has the most components. And then for resistors, well, they just kind of go around. If you have any bypass capacitors that need to be placed close to your chip, you want to place those. For the part, I want to rotate this, so I'll rotate with the right click and rotate. Oh, I didn't rotate it properly. Okay. How am I going to do this? Maybe place my capacitor like this, so it crosses, like it gets both of those there. I don't know. So you can click Click that part and it picks up automatically. Let's right click, rotate. So in general, when you're placing parts, you want to place parts as close as close to each other as possible to keep your to keep your wires uh, as short as possible. Why do we want our wires as short as possible? So that we have the least amount of inductance in the wire. And the less inductance you have, the less uh, the less distortion you have in your signals that get transmitted. Not that we need to concern ourselves with that this much. Like, we, we don't need to be that concerned about such a small board and uh, a chip that likely doesn't have extremely fast rise times, signal rise times. But just in general, you want to keep traces short. Um, Let's see. The resistors are not critical to keep close to the chip. So I'm going to figure something out. Maybe place my resistor here. Now, if you're not able to pick up parts for some reason, right click application mode, general edit, and you can right click application mode, placement edit, placement edit. You can just pick up, you can just click on a part and move it around. Right. You know, for LEDs and connectors and things that you have to push, you want them more like to the edge of a PCB in general. To save myself some space, I might rotate this LED. There are a million ways to lay out a printed circuit board. This is just to get you going in or CAD 17.4, okay? If you want to do like professional layout, then you need to get my professional course that I have, I'm doing a limited release on. Just email me about it or message me about it. Like if you're interested in my professional course where you do things with design for manufacturing and all that stuff, then just let me know in the comment section. It's mostly out. So let's say you can't move a part right. How did I move it? You hit the move command or you can go to edit move. Whoops, not copy. Edit move and then move it around. Yeah. This resistor though, man, this resistor, fine. I'm sure your layout is going to look better than mine. Okay. Just I didn't script or prepare this at all. Right click, rotate. Right click, rotate. Now these courtyards are overlapping. I 
I'm not too concerned about that because they're really big for this board. So, but really you wouldn't want them to overlap. So how do we fix this but still keep them close together? Good question. Maybe let's right click, go into application mode placement edit and then select these components. Right click on one of the components and then you can do an align components. Whoops. Hit cancel. I'm in, I'm in placement edit mode. Ah. I'll hold down the control key and select these components. Now if I right click align and then vertical center equal spacing. Right click done. You may not have that option. If you're, the alternative would be to go to maybe application mode, then you can quick utilities grids Reduce your grid a little to maybe 25 thousandths of an inch. Click apply, then OK. Then go to move mode and then you have to like manually set your distances. Okay. And it's not the it's not the cleanest, honestly. Yeah, placement is just horrendous anyhow you could do it like this you know let's see to prevent crossing wires So how do I know where to place these things? It's because of these little wires called rats, line, rat lines, these little, or air wires if you're using Eagle, and then it shows you the net name if you do like a show element to see which net it is. All right, let's go back into application and mode, placement edit, pick up the part. I didn't want to pick that up, so I'll right click and choose, oops select by pin here so it picks up the whole part now the text is very messy this is where I show you what I was going to show you with the color thing so go to your color wheel or go to this uh, setup colors then you want to choose your components turn off component value device type tolerance user part click apply then OK we just have reference designator left good now let's move this thing, this resistor. You know, you could do something like that or whatever. Here, what about this? And then you can select multiple parts and then hit move. Oh, wait a second. Hit move, then select multiple parts. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah. Why am I getting hung up on this thing? I'm not even going to use this design for anything, so I don't know why these things are, this is bothering me. Okay, I think this is, a. Uh, see, this is crossing over, and I don't like that. Mm, rotate. fine who cares all right so now let's do some things save the board now this board needs to get smaller really so how do i do that i can go to shape 
add edit my boundary, then I want to select the board geometry design outline subclass. So let's go to board geometry design outline. Type unfilled no yeah, and then I'm going to select it. Now I look at the command window. It says pick the edit starting point on the shape boundary. What does that mean? Just start here if this is where you start want to start cutting the boundary down. Right, and then you make a little enclosed fence. And that did the exact opposite of what I was looking for. Hit cancel. You know what? Let's just make a new let's just make a new board. So go to outline design and we want to edit this you can also move it around right but yeah maybe just choose create delete existing design yeah and then we'll draw the rectangle here start at the origin left click okay and here we go Click OK. Good enough. Let's look at the three view. Hit save. Yes. And this is how it looks. Now I don't have 3D models for my components. How unfortunate. Before I start routing though, remember we have a change to make in the schematic. I need to make some connectors here. So let's get rid of this voltage probe thing actually you don't even need to get rid of it we can just add connectors go to your search providers part search providers and then you can select like a um, connector one position you know let's see what happens okay hit enter then i'll choose ultra librarian Hmm, maybe male one point header. Cool. This is a three position header. Oh, I don't see why this would be a good idea so yeah maybe this two position header or vertical connector is good so right click place this part i chose it because it has the 3d model you can choose whatever you want place it right click and mode now I'll wire this connection. Control S to save. The board, the schematic design has changed. So we need to change the PCB. How do we update it? Well, let's save this first. You can go to your PCB, choose, choose the option for, uh, file and then update the layout and you'll get this window over here it says it added the connections added the component then you sync it now we have a new component but that's i can only see that because i'm in uh, placement edit mode see anything all the parts show up automatically over here when you're in placement edit mode if you're in general edit mode like i just switched to there you won't see that change okay but you will see the log in the command window telling you that something was changed. So what we do is go to place components manually. And now we have a new part in this list, just like we saw earlier. And then you can go ahead and place it. Right click, place it toward the edge of your PCB. Now let's look at the 3D view. Click OK. That's the connector. 
It's looking okay so far. I'm uncomfortable with the gold solder mask look on there. So let's change our colors. Color wheel. If you don't remember, go to setup colors. And for the solder mask top or film mask, I'm not sure which one it is, but anyway, board geometry, solder mask top. Let's change this to green. Now when I do the 3D view or go to display 3D, then the solder mask is green. I'll minimize this to show you something else. Let's say I want to add some text, right? Or a logo or something. Let's go to add text. I won't do the logo, but I'll choose the text. So text block size, maybe four. It's large enough. Make sure you're on board geometry, silk screen top. Now the text is going to look goldish, which is fine here. And 555 timer PCB. Kirsch. Right click, choose done. Now the text is very skinny. Does it show up on the thing? No, it doesn't. So how do we fix that? Well, you can go to your setup and choose design parameters, choose text, ellipses, set your photo width for the text to be something between six thousandths of an inch to ten thousandths of an inch. Maybe let's go with 10 mils. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. It's overkill, but that's okay. Click OK, click Apply, then click OK. Now, when I zoom in here, the text looks thicker. Does it show up on the 3D canvas, though? Doesn't look like it. Let's see. Let's try again. I'll only do outer layers to reduce the... There we go. Now it shows. Very nice. Okay, now when I move the text around, it should move. So if I right click this and rotate this text and place C2 over here. Yeah, it moved. That looks good. And then I can move some other things around if I want, like this J1. Does it show it? Oh, okay. So I moved. What did I move? I moved reference designator assembly top. Mm -mm. I want the assembly text to be in the center. I want the silk screen text, which is this, to be on the side. Yeah, very nice. And then you do that with the other silk screen text. So right here, we've got assembly top, R4. Notice this white wire is showing me where, which part the reference designators belongs to. And assembly top, I'm going to put that assembly top for R4 in the middle there. For the silk screen top text, I will put it over here. This one is display top. Oh, I guess that goes over there. That's fine. For this one, we have R1, and it is what? Reference designator assembly top. So right click, rotate this, place it, rotate, hover over here, silk screen top. We put all our silk screens outside here. Okay, I don't like all this rotating stuff, so let's do a quick shortcut. Let's type in funk key space r space i angle space 90. Hit enter. Now when I pick something, I can rotate with lowercase r. If you have caps lock on your keyboard, it won't work. See, if I try to pick it up, the R caps will show up. Not good. Turn your caps off. Hit delete. Pick up your thing. Rotate. Easy. Let's see what else we got here. If you hover over there, assembly top, move that R3. 
Okay, is this display top? This would be a lot easier if I change the text color. So let's go to color wheel, set up colors. And I want my component reference designator silkscreen top to be, oh, let's say yellow. Apply, okay. So I can easily distinguish. And this R3 belongs over here. R2 belongs here. The silk screen R2 belongs over here. Okay. Now you don't really want text overlapping over here, but anyway, you want is you want to covering the silk screen text, and it sure is. Now, normally you you want a polarity marker for this thing, which we do have, so that's good. That's good for assembly and the thing. Let's um, undo so it's in its proper space or proper place. U1. Okay, that's assembly. We want the assembly text or U1 there. U1 for a silk screen. Ah, tricky, tricky. Where does this go? Uh, maybe I can fit it here. Right. Then for the LED, you know, you just grab your LED text, say what it is. You can put it like this if you want, you know, if you can get creative with it. Then J1. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Looks good. Let's right click. Uh, no, nothing. Save the board. Yes. If there's anything else you want to add, then you can do that. But this looks okay. Now it's time to get into some Gerber action. Uh, well, actually, wait a second. We need to route it. Let's route the traces. So if we go to back to design workflow, we finish the board outline. I did. Oh, cross section stack up. Let's choose create. And let's look at the PCB stack up. You set it to whatever settings you need it to be. Your board can be eight mils thick if you want. You know, you have to talk to your manufacturer and get these numbers. But typically you can be okay with this. You know, you can do a one ounce copper on there. Set your layers. Uh, let's see for your dielectric thickness. It's up to you. I have conductor on top and bottom for the PCB. Ideally, I would want a, a whole ground on the bottom, really. Mm, do I want to do that? Maybe I should. Maybe I should. Hmm. Sure. If you want to change it to a ground plane on the bottom, you can go to setup cross section and then this one instead of conductor, you can set it as plane. Click apply, then OK. Then you can do a shape, rectangular shape, then go to your options. Whenever you're in a in a operation or a function, you go into an options tab to see what options you have. If this doesn't show up for you, you can go to display windows and turn whatever on. Now I want to place a rectangle that is part of the etch class, which means copper, and is on the bottom layer. I want my copper to be dynamic, and I want it to be assigned not to a dummy net, but to, if I click on my ellipses, I want it to be assigned to the zero net. Do I want to draw my rectangle or place it? I'll draw it. And it's being drawn on the bottom here. Right click, choose done. Save yes. Now anything that needs to connect to ground will do so automatically. See, we have thermal relief for the capacitor, the through hole capacitor being connected to ground automatically over here too. Very nice. So why is this so thin though? Why is it so thin? Let's go back to our design workflow. And let's look at the netlist. No, netlist is good. Placement. 
Yeah, we already placed the parts. Constraints. Let's go into physical. I want my minimum trace to be whatever I calculate from my current carrying calculations. So you need to go into some free or whatever trace with calculator. And let's say you're, you want to carry one amp or something like that. You put in whatever your outer layer trace calculation is supposed to be. You come back and let's say it gives you back five mils, but we'll go with 10 mils. Actually, eight is a safe one to go with. Eight mils. For the trace width, for spacing, you want to set that. Go to all layers. Uh, five mils is okay, but for certain manufacturers, you know, a safe bet is six thousandths of an inch spacing between all, all parts and traces and stuff. For same net spacing, let's do all layers. Uh, let's go with six thousandths of an inch spacing. For manufacturing, designed for fabrication and all that, that's a whole like professional setup type thing. Actually, you can run a wizard that will help you with that. But you can define things like annular ring, copper features, copper spacing, silk screen, a lot of things. But I won't get into that. This board is simple enough anyway. Okay. Now, let's notice something here. The spokes that were here, no longer there. Why is that? I'm going to see if I need to update any shapes. Let's go to our DRC update. Uh, we've got some issues, right? It turned red. Let's go to click here, display status. Oh, out of date shapes. And it lets us know if we click on this icon, it'll let us know what shape it is. Point to shape. Yeah, it's not. And it lets us know the net for the shape. Let's do update to smooth. Now notice it updated its thermal relief. Also notice that the spoke width, the thickness of the spokes is, uh, the thickness of the spokes is increased. Very nice. Okay, that is physical. We did spacing, same net spacing, electrical. Electrical would typically be for like high speed stuff, so if you go here to electrical and routing, you can set your impedance, what impedance you want your traces to be, total edge length, differential pairs, that's the whole thing. I won't get into all that. For detailed course content or something like that, you need to enroll in my courses. I do have a new course that's uh, going to be finished in May. And if you're curious about that, it takes you through the entire professional process like Nothing is left undone. Now let's go to interconnect. And by nothing, I mean design for manufacturer, high, for manufacturing, high speed PCB design, high speed digital design. But uh, only the design for manufacturing module is open. So if you want that manufacturing with the full professional process for a low speed board, then message me. For Or you can give the comments below. But anyway, enough promotion. So interconnect shapes polygon oh do i want to no i already made a shape for my plane what about manual routing okay so it says add connect right and when you do when you go into add connect you're in routing mode now so you can go to your options always go to your options when you start and i want as few traces on my bottom plane as possible because i don't want to break up the ground so what I'll do is right click, swap layers, and now my active layer is the, oops, my bad, right click, swap layers again. My active layer is my top layer, and my alternate layer is the bottom layer. Okay, do I want to auto blank other rats when I'm routing? Yes. A rat is the air wires, these little blue lines to show me where to make the connections. These come from these wires. I made the connection as a schematic. Now it's guiding me on where to do that on the mechanical PCB. Okay, now for the line lock, I want to set to 45 degrees because it looks pretty. Uh, there's a thing going around where if you're doing a PCB, always do night. You can uh, never do 90 degrees. That's true for like signals, what, two gigabits per second and up, but we're not. 
that's not necessary below that, okay, generally, for signal integrity purposes. For etching purposes, asset etching, older technology asset etching, maybe, yeah, 90 degrees is the problem. But you can you can go at 90 degrees. However, I never go at 90 degrees because it doesn't look as attractive as 45 degrees. That's my reason. So now, let's make our connections. When a board is this simple, it is kind of pretty much connect the dots, you know. PCB design in general has evolved from connecting the dots, though. There is so much that I'm not covering in this quick tutorial, this quick start. So this is by, this is like, not by any means the end of the, the thing, but anyway. If you already have some PCP design skill or experience and you just sort of want a pick-me-up for this software, then this can work for you. Okay, so this one's a little tricky. I might, I might make a little exception. Is it better to make a via, um, go through to the top of this right here? Generally, no, because you're going to be cutting this ground plane on the bottom layer, like all the way across there, and you don't want that. So what I'll do is right click to done. I'll make a little selection, delete this, and then go back into route mode. Go to route connect. Make my connection on the top. And then this one, I'll right click swap layers make a quick connection on the bottom very short very short swap layers again and continue doing my thing on what a pain oh my gosh all right so there's a strategy you can use to avoid that problem from happening uh, and that would be the that would be routing your traces on the top layer vertically or horizontally and then on the bottom layer in the orthogonal direction so what I mean is for example the top layer you route horizontally the bottom layer you route vertically let's see mm. so I'm gonna break one of my personal rules which is to not route in between pins uh, especially like around components it's to just not do it but in this case just so I can get through it I'm gonna make an exception so here I'll click I'll double click and make a via double click again make a via only because this is relatively short uh, I allow this to cut through the ground plane. Generally, you can have some issues though. Let's say this this is too wonky over here. So let's go to edit, no, route, slide. And you kind of want your, ah, man. Kind of want to smooth out your traces and separate them First of all, you don't want traces to be unnecessarily close because then that introduces things like crosstalk and all that. So, you know, you can space your parts further apart. You can do a number of things to keep your traces further apart for each other, from each other. But I won't get into all that here. Now, right click, choose done. I can add another via here just to get through this maybe put this here and once I put it here right and double click this is technically called a fan out sort of ah there's too much cutting going on of the ground plane see this is this is what happens when you don't place the parts properly 
routing becomes routing is at the mercy of part placement so place your parts nicely plan ahead now for add connect i want to not be on the bottom but i want to swap layers go on the top see i always pay attention to this options side very good so I made a few cuts, three cuts into the ground plane, but they're very short. Don't do it in long distances if you even do it at all. Hit save, yes. Now it's looking a bit more like a board. Okay. What else do we have in the design workflow? We did our connects, we did some sliding. For timing, you don't need to worry about this this is for high speed pcb design manufacturing preparation test preparation this is if you want to make test points on your pcb we won't do that gloss window area you know no element found let's see it's gloss is supposed to smooth things out but anyway artwork film record setup all right this is gerber's that's, that's pretty much all it is, Gerber's. Just call it Gerber's. And for this one, we want to set up our our art our uh, artwork film layers, like the solder mask, top, and all that stuff. So let me show you something. Here's a trick. Click OK. Go to your color wheel, display, or set up colors. We're going to turn everything off. Select only the paste mask top. That would be for the surface mount. Now, you know what's not good? Our LED footprints don't have paste mask defined. Hmm. Yeah, it's not good. But anyway, you choose this category. Uncheck this, the DRC thing. Click Apply. Click OK. Then, you go into your artwork film record setup. Then whatever you're looking at currently, that's the thing that you can right click, add, and it will automatically add the film layers. Top paste, click OK. When we do this drop down, it all pins, their paste mask top, all V is their paste mask top, become they get dropped into this thing. You can right click on top and choose display for artwork check then it shows you the top the top what the top etch so meaning copper top layer pin pads on the top layer and via via pin pads on the top layer you can even change the name here though maybe you want to change it to layer one and then the bottom layer right click display for artwork check is layer two Copper layer one, copper layer two. All right, let's go and add some more special color views. Go to setup, colors, and I want to look at, let's turn everything off. I want to look at, um, um, there are no parts on the bottom, so I don't need a paste mask bottom. Maybe a solder mask top. Whoops. Uh, let's hit cancel. Let's go to the, set up colors okay so turn everything off solder mask top you want this leftmost box here turn off the drc thing apply okay now we're only looking at solder mask top so when we right click add in the film window it only adds what we're looking at top mask see Pins, solder mask top, via class, solder mask top. Okay, next see, what else do we got? We need, we, we have solder mask on the top of the PCB, there's copper, we also need silk screen. Okay, how do we do that? Keep your artwork film control window open, go to your color wheel. If you don't remember, you can go to setup colors. Okay. Turn everything off, and then we want a number of things for silk screen. We want geometry, like board geometry, silk screen, top. 
and I'll turn this white. Turn the box white and then turn it on. Good. I also want uh, package geometry silk screen top. Then I want components silk screen top. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Referen components reference designator silk screen top. I'll turn those white and there we go. And then check mark those. A little confusing, right? You can go, you can drill down. You can go to components, then choose just reference designator, and then and choose silk screen top, silk screen bottom. What else do we want? Manufacturing, auto silk top. Let's check mark that. Drawing format. Mm, no, let's see. This is fine. Click apply, then click OK. Now, what are we looking at? We're just looking at the silk screen. Let's right click, add top silk. OK. Then we can do assembly top. Let's go to assembly top. Turn everything off. Mm, let's see. Geometry for the packages, assembly top. We also want um, maybe board geometry, assembly notes, assembly detail, maybe even dimensions. I also want reference designators for my components on the assembly top layer. Click apply, then OK. Now what we're looking at, we're going to right click add, and we're going to add all those elements to assembly top, top assembly. Click OK. We don't have anything on the bottom, any, any objects on the bottom, but if you did have them on the bottom, like bottom assembly and all that stuff, then you would, you would, uh, let me give you an example. Go to your color wheel, turn everything off, and then you would do like solder mask bottom, you know. In fact, we do have solder mask bottom. I forgot about that because we have through whole components. So let's do solder mask bottom, click apply, then OK. Then right click, add bottom solder mask. Click OK. If you right click, display for artwork check. These all look pretty okay. Yeah, looks fine. You may want an assembly inspection, or actually, you know what? We need board outline. So for this, let's say we need to add something manually, right? Just click on the pink thing, right click, add, and then choose board geometry design outline. Click OK. And there we go. Now when we right click display for artwork check, it also shows the board outline. Top silk. Mm. No, it's fine. It's all good. Okay. I might even do photo plot outline on this one. Eh? So let's right click. Add manual this time. And Let's call it outline, photo plot, board geometry. We want manufacturing, photo plot outline. Click OK. Now, right click display of artwork check. It doesn't exist. I need to make it. So, display for artwork check. Uh, let's see. Uh, click OK. Choose Add Rectangle. Go to Options. Always go to Options when you're in a mode. Then choose Manufacturing Photo Plot Outline. And this color, I want it to appear. It was black, so it would not be visible if I drew it. So let's turn this on to turn it to activate it. That's a shortcut in the color wheel thing. Do I want to draw the rectangle? Yes. Click Place. Right click. Choose Done. This can get confusing, so I'll. Change the color for this photo plot outline. Go to your thing. Go to manufacturing. 
and photo plot outline I will make pink, hot pink. Click apply, then OK. Say yes. Okay, next we have export. Well, in the design workflow, we did artwork film record setup, right? But instead, we can go to export and choose Gerber, and it pulls up the same thing. Undefined line width. This is another thing here. Um, before I do that, let's set up some dimensions. Let's turn everything on for the most part. Go back to our color wheel components. Turn off component value dev type tolerance user part. Click apply. Then OK. I'm actually going to save this color view. How do I do this? You can do display view color view save and call it all layers. Save. Now I can go to my view menu and choose file all layers or film. Solder mask bot, bottom solder mask. I can scroll up and down to, to scroll through them. And then I can go to special view all layers to check that out as well. I know it's a lot of information, but just bear with me. Okay, just stay with me here. Okay, we're almost there. Let's do some measurements for the printed circuit board. So manufacture dimension environment. You want to not choose the photo plot outline. You want to choose the board outline. Right click. And why can I see anything? Right click linear dimension. Very good. Now we can right click. Snap pick to segment vertex. Scroll out, scroll back in. Snap pick to segment vertex. Then we're going to place, the, like the command window says, uh, well, it's not telling us that. But anyway, place the measurement text there. Very good. You actually don't need to right click snap pick to segment vertex all the time if you're good at selection, but I just do it just to make sure. Snap pick to segment. Right click, choose dot. Make sure that your origin marker is on the bottom here. That's good. Let's see if there's anything else manufacture. Drafting. You can create details. You can add parallel lines. You can uh, create a drill table. You know, a cross section chart. You can set your table to be in inches instead of mils layer material name, individual layer thickness, thickness tolerance, you know, click OK, and then you click, place your thickness table or whatever. This text is very thick, but that's OK. I think I'll go to Setup, Design Parameters, change my text thickness for the smaller text to maybe 6 thousandths of an inch. Control C, Control V, up to text block three, then click OK, click apply, then OK. So now when I click on here, it's easier to see. OK, what else do we need? You can go ahead and place a drawing symbol. Maybe this right here, A size H hide, and then place your thing here. Right click, choose done. What else can we place? Oh. Every PCB typically would have mounting holes, right? So if you want, you can place mechanical symbol mounting one to five and I place mounting holes on the PCB. And then you can just copy with this copy or do edit copy and then that way you can manually copy and place mounting holes. Not the best way to do it. You pretty much always want your mounting holes to show up on the schematic. But that's a quick way to do it if you're pressed for time or forgot to include that step in your video tutorial. You know. Click save, yes. 
Now, if we look at the PCB again, click OK. We've got a board with some mounting holes on there, the traces. It's starting to look better. OK. You put in your information, your notes, so on and so forth. If you don't know what to put in, there are some standards you would and professional design practices to help you with that, but that's in my advanced course. So IPC 2581, uh, really people care about Gerber, so let's do Gerber. Same deal. Now here's the thing. We have we can print out PDF of this and put the order of the page how these print out is dependent on this PDF sequence so the first thing I want on my PDF maybe mm, this is a tricky one display for artwork because see what I see here is what's going to show up on my PDF um, honestly oh that's a good it's a good point What I'll do is set my top silk as layer of one or page one. Top mask, page two. Underneath the solder mask is the copper, so that'll be layer three. The dielectric is in the middle, so layer uh the second copper layer will be layer four will be page four, excuse me. Page five will be whatever solder mask is on below that so bottom solder mask let's see page five what would be on the bottom of the solder mask uh, nothing really but we'll do page six one two three four five six seven eight okay so top assembly i want this to be page seven uh, let's see so we have page five four five three four six seven four we have two fours, top mask and top mask, top paste, top mask. Okay, so I mistook top paste and top mask is the same thing. So, hmm, top mask comes before top paste, sort of. So silk. Top mask, I'll put as layer two. Top paste, I'll put as three. Top assembly, I'll put last. Layer one will be. Four. Layer two will be fifth in the printing sequence. Bottom solder mask will be sixth in the printing sequence. Photo plot outline will be seventh in the printing sequence. And top assembly will be the last thing in the printing sequence. Let's display for artwork check. Very good. This is where you would have your design notes and everything. But there's one more view I want to add, which will be my assembly inspection so let's turn all layers on and what I see here everything I see here I will add to my artwork for printing so go finally to export Gerber right click and choose add we're adding what we're looking at at the time so uh, let's see inspection or something like that click OK and then this will be like page 9 yeah undefined line width whenever we have lines that are too thin like zero line width see right here uh, it gets not printed pretty much so we need to any line that has an undefined width like zero width will by default set it to maybe five thousandths of an inch in thickness and then just do that for everything else. Okay. 
if you want something like a multi-layer stack up, well, just comment below and we can talk about it. It's in my upcoming course. All right. And by multi-layer, I mean like six layers, 10 layers, 12 layers. All right. Other things, you want to make sure you have Gerber RS274X if that's what your manufacturer wants. Usually it is. Output units are inches. Film control. Let's set our apertures, edit, auto without rotation. Click OK, click OK. Click select all. Now, one second. Let's do click OK. I'm going to create a special folder for the artwork. So go to setup. User preferences, and then for drawing or display, maybe general. Let's look for preferences art artwork. Okay, I don't know why it's called ADS underscore SD art, but this is the setting you want. It specifies the subdirectory to which artwork, Gerber, drill files, and IPC2581 files are written. Default is the same directory as the design. Okay, so just call it artwork. Click apply. Now, when we generate our artwork, we have a separate folder that the artwork gets created in. Let's go to export. Let's set up our drill parameters, leading zero suppression, enhanced Exelon format. Click OK. Scale factor set to one. Hit tab. And you can do repeat codes or not. It's up to you. Root file name. It see now it's going to get by default put in this artwork folder. Let's select drill. And really, you would place a drill table. So let me see here. Go to export or no manufacturer, create drill table, and then display total slot drill count. Look okay. You put it something like over here or something like that. Yeah. Save. Yes. Go to export Gerber. If we do it, right click display L1 and we do right click display for artwork all. Ah, see, that's interesting. Okay. Now see, let's choose all layers. Ooh. Okay. Okay. I see what's up here. The drill table doesn't get saved. What class is this in? Horizontal lines like manufacturing NC legend one two okay. So we want to add this to our Gerber for inspection all. We want to click on the pink thing, right click add manufacturing NC legend one two and add these two. Click OK. Now, when we display inspect all for artwork check, we, we see it. Good. All right, select all. And then we will, let's just double check. Do apertures, edit, auto without rotation. Okay, zero new apertures, good. Click OK. Make sure these are all checked with select all, create artwork. The following films contain the outline class inspect all. Do you want to continue? Sure. Double check and scroll to the bottom to make sure there are no errors. Inspect all, created with warnings, top still created with warnings. Uh, let's see. Top of the score silk. What it, what warning does it say? Zero width line width line found at this thing. If we zoom in, zero width line found here. Using undefined line width of five mils. See, that's how that fixes that automatically. I 
I would like to change that. So if I right click super filter and just choose line, I think I can modify this line. Yeah. Right click, change the width of this line and change it to like five thousandths of an inch manually. This does not change the footprint itself, but it does fix that default thing. Anyway, I'll turn off my super filter so that I could select everything again. Click Control S to save. The artwork files have been generated. We have the drill, we have the artwork or Gerber, and right, we also want to pick and place data, yeah? So if you want, you can set it to body center. It, it really depends on what the manufacturer wants. I know Sierra Circuits likes the origin of the parts to be in the body center. And then you go to artwork, you know, you do, well, actually I won't even do artwork. I'll right click and then do a new folder and call it assembly. Then in this assembly folder, I could save, hit export and close. Now there are a number of other things to create, like the actual PDF for this board. So go to export PDF, select all, and these will print in the order that was defined when I did export Gerber here, the PDF sequence. They don't tell you that. Okay, PDF, select all, and pretty much just leave the settings the way they are. And then you can launch PDF viewer or not. The units will be set to whatever you want. So mils or I mean millimeters or inches. Auto size with uh yeah, I'll just leave that the way it is. And then hit export. Voila. Great. I don't like the whole colors and things, so you can change that to black and white, but that's the gist of it. This PDF that gets generated, you want to put it in the, you want to put it in your assembly folder. So let's go to my project folder, my 555 timer project, and here it is. So let's move that to assembly. Artwork you also want in the assembly folder. But for this artwork, maybe select, if you want to zip up the art files, depending on your manufacturer and assembly house, they want you to zip up the art files and the drill file. Then you would uh, send to compressed folder. 555 timer, Gerber, and drill. Then do a control X assembly, control V to paste. Let's save yes. There's a ton of settings. This isn't this doesn't even scratch the surface of your whole thing. But yeah, you can update your DRC. Oh, that's something very important. When you're placing parts and routing, you want to check your DRC often to make sure you have no errors. But it says editing time 14 minutes. Really? Okay, cool. Save this. Hit yes. Double check to make sure your 3D is looking good. You can actually even go to view camera top. And then if you want, you can do like a file export an image of this even. If my thing would fix itself, good. And then you can do like assembly, a nice picture for it. Maybe something like a JPEG or PNG. You can also do step export, you know, for the file name 555 timer 3D top. Okay, and that's the PCB design finished. 
Hey, now that you're done with this printed circuit board, uh, you're able to submit your Gerber files to a manufacturer. But I've got something I want to share with you. So I have a course that I'm working on. It's about a third finished. Thir a third of the videos are done being recorded uh, for the first two projects. And in that course, the full program, you'll go from zero to pro in WorkCAD and in professional PCB design. It's for a certain kind, it's for certain people, uh, mostly professionals who have a, a decent amount of disposable income, okay, to enroll in the course and gain pretty much complete mastery of the ORCAD software in addition to doing low speed and high speed multi-layer board designs, designing for EMC, EMI, signal integrity, all that good stuff, footprint creation, everything, okay? And it's for those who are just learn, trying to learn the ORCAD software, who already have the skills, but it's also for those who have zero skills, zero knowledge of PCB design, who want to go from zero all the way to independent professional, just like the just like the pros, or who can get their foot in the door and answer some questions. Now, I'm not saying you'll be able to design motherboards or anything like that. Okay, that's that stuff you develop over years and years of experience. When I say pro, I mean you can get an entry level, maybe junior level job at, with a uh, hardware company or company that gets hardware. So if you have any questions about this new course that's being released in May, you can pre-buy it. Uh, contact me so you can pre-buy the course at half off. Okay, you might even get a deeper discount since it's since May is still kind of far away. All right. And if you're in a special group, then I might give you a deeper discount than the half off. But email me, uh, comment in, down in the section below to say I'm in or interested. Projects one and two are already finished recording. So if you enroll now, you're not just going to be waiting. You have work to do. Okay. All right. And that's great if you want to increase your income, if you want to do freelancing on the side, if you want to start your own hardware company, you'll be able to do all that by the time or start doing all that by the time you're done with the course. All right. Well, thanks for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Peace.